Hello and welcome. In this lecture, we will see what constitutes the essence of technical communication. It is essentially two aspects. Technical communication is essentially messages related to science, engineering and technology. They could be in written form, in graphics, oral or video. The purpose of scientific communication or technical communication is for others to know what you have done or others to reproduce what you have done. Now, there are uh, very common, most of us have uh, come across uh, different forms of uh, technical communication. It could be a research thesis or it could be a R and D project or it could even be a laboratory experiment which all of us have done in our um, school days or it could be a simple set of instructions of how to do certain things, how to operate a mobile phone, how to use a particular app and so on. Now, what I would like you to do is uh, do a very small exercise. Uh, Let us say you met uh, somebody from your department or your colleague or your friend who is from uh, say a different uh, area, not in the same area as what you have been working and you want to tell him or her about some technical project that you have done. Okay? It could be a short project which is say one month duration or a very long project of say one year duration but you have got only 3 minutes to do it. Okay? So, what I would like you to do now is to uh, pause this video now and then write down uh, in about uh, 3 to 4 sentences or 5 sentences uh, uh, the content which you would speak for about 3 minutes. So, please pause the video now, write it down and then we will come back to see what you have written. Welcome back. I hope you have uh, completed the uh, assignment. Now, usually when we talk about uh, technical communication, there are several aspects that one could think when you are writing a text. It could be a background, a motivation, aim, methodology, results, implication, novelty, what, what is the new thing that you have done, how is it significant or where it is used and sometimes the future scope. Now, please take down the paper that uh, you have written your uh, description and then underline these aspects and identify them. For example, if you had written background, underline this uh, words which are ex uh, background and then write as write it as background and suppose you had written results, underline those words and write as results. So, in 3 minutes, what are the aspects among these things that background, motivation, aim, methodology? that where you are able to cover. Okay, I cannot hear what you say, it is okay. But let us say, um, if I were to give you just one minute, in that one minute, what of these aspects would you convey? Is it just the background and uh, future scope for example? or it is just a motivation and application or is it just the aim and results or just the significance. So, you have just got one minute, just possibly just couple of sentences. What would you choose? Towards the end of this lecture, I hope we would have conveyed what these two important aspects that you need to convey in one minute. So, what do you see here other than the most obvious? How is this related to technical communication? This is a drawing and we are asking, we are talking about technical communication, how is this related? The question is, how many strokes does it take for this artist to represent Gandhiji? Can you count them? Three, that is right. So, it is just three strokes that you can represent Gandhiji. Now, what does it mean to technical communication? 
if I were to translate this, I would say how many sentences does it take to describe your technical work? You need to be able to isolate those few essential sentences from your work in a clearly stated manner, just as this artist has depicted Gandhiji in three strokes. Once you have done that, then you can decorate it and dec further decorate it by putting more details like wrinkles or mosh or several other details and bring out the whole beautiful picture. Scientific communication is exactly like this. You need to be able to extract the important information and then later be able to elaborate it further. So, in terms of this picture where you have three strokes isolated, what is the equivalent of this three strokes in scientific communication or technical communication? All of technical work is essentially solving a problem. Solving a problem means that there is a question and an answer. It is very much like a textbook problem. You have a question defined and if it is a solved question, then you also have an answer. So, the two sentences that we are looking for are the question and the answer. What is a question? Some people call it aim, objective. A question is a clearly defined interrogative statement, which means you need to have something like who, what, where, when, why or how. You would have noticed such sentences are described in your textbooks. So, if you are able to state the problem that you are solving in terms of a precisely defined question, then you have got one portion of your answer. Then comes an answer. The answer must be a direct answer to this question. So, it should be a statement which exactly answers what you have raised in this interrogative statement. Now, sometimes you might find that your answer is not really matching the question that you started off with, because you might have found something, but that was not what you started off with. And then all you need to do is to just restate the question to match the answer, but in the end you should have a question and an answer which directly answers what you have started off with. So, let us take an example. The question is something like if you want to answer what you wanted to find out. As an example, suppose you have done a project in telecommunication and you want to say what you did, you state it as a question. We worked on a telecommunication project because we wanted to find out how people in remote villages can be warned of an impending calamity. Now, you see here the question is a clearly defined interrogative statement, how people in remote villages can be warned. So, this is the essential question of your project. Now, the answer statement is basically what you found out in the end. So, you could say we found that an automated short message voice call received the best attention among the people, which is supported by our results from a queued calling application we developed. Now, although I have decorated the question and answer statement with other words, you should just see the essence. The essence is in these two highlighted sentences, how people in remote villages can be warned question they can be warned by automated short voice messages. So, here you can given even 30 seconds you are able to describe whole of your project in two lines the question and the answer. 
The question and answer is like a crux of technical communication. All forms of technical communication must have it in some form or the other, be it a short presentation or a long presentation. The question and answer is like the three strokes in this art. It is present in the short form as well as in the detailed form. Now, next time when you are asked to describe a project, keep ready a question and an answer. You will find that that is the most effective way to convey your problem. When you have more time, you can expand it. Thank you for listening.